Sky Squad, we are back in the building, and we got to talk about the face-off that happened last night on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. And it really was about somebody's face coming off when you think about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we'll get into all of the nitty-gritty in just one second. We got a quick news story before we dive into that. It is Love & Hip Hop adjacent slash related, but... Then we'll get into the actual episode itself and we'll rate it. Before we dive into all of that, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell button, and smack that like button so we can keep this engagement going. Um, listen, okay, in the same studio, I just did some painting yesterday. It was a rush job, so I got to kind of re, I could go back over the walls a little bit. I decided I would do it myself just because I felt like, why not? I got the tools here. And so, Yesterday, I just spent some time, you know, kind of getting it together. I hate a beige wall. You know, y'all know how I feel about that, right? So I had to like give it some color. And I love the way that the black looks in the background. And then the light coming is coming from the window. Just so you guys can understand my studio setup, I have a light right here. And then there's a window right here that lets a lot of light into the room. And so I always feel like there's a way to make a dark room look bright. So we're kind of working with that right now. We're going to get the artwork back going and all that good stuff like that. So a uh, little evolution of the, the studio space. So bear with me as I get that together. So while we're talking about getting things together, all right, um, will Erica Mena and Safari ever get this together? Now, this is coming to us from our friends over at Reality Entertainment TV. And it's also coming from the initial source, which is In Touch Weekly. Now, the headline is intriguing in and of itself when you put it into a broader context. Um, but I think there is something that he says that is a bit more interesting um, as we get into the nitty gritty, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm prefacing this for you guys to look at the headline, but we're going to dig deeper, all right? So the headline reads, Safari Samuels pleads for child support payments to Erica Mena to be lowered, no longer own, earns $61,000 per month. Now, for some reason, I don't know why I was thinking that he probably was making more than that. I mean, and granted, this, I don't know if the only, if this is all from OnlyFans, I don't know what all this is from. So in my mind, I, they were just making $100,000 a month, right? I just, I don't know. Especially when you put into context him gifting Rolexes to other people's children. So, and, at the end, and a lot of people brought that up in the comment section. So we'll get into the story. So it says, Safari pleads with a judge to lower his child support payments to ex-wife because he claims he no longer earns the $61,000 per month. Okay, so they had reached a divorce settlement in 2022 that covered all issues, including custody, child support, and the division of their property, which would be $4,305 per month in child support. Okay, so when you put that into context of making $61,000, um, let's say you do the taxes on that. I mean, you're probably going to come away with what? 40 something thousand if you're doing your taxes in the way that a lot of people do them but i don't know what his accounting looks like okay so you have forty thousand dollars per month which is still very very good right so then you take away four thousand dollars from that and what you really come away with is so you got about thirty five thousand thirty thousand depending on the month less to play with okay that's still a good amount of money to make a living but it kind of depends on what season you're in, right? And that's going to be important to talk about with re with regards to reality TV. All right. So in the new petition, the child support, Safari said the child support amount was based upon his monthly income of $61,000 per month and Erica's monthly income of $41,289 per month. He said since the order was entered, there has been a significant change in circumstances regarding the custodial arrangement and earnings of the of the parties. His lawyer noted that at the time of the divorce, the petitioner was a main reality talent for Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, yet he is no longer a full-time talent on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. Further, at the time of the divorce, the petitioner was also booking appearances and generating an income from such appearances. The petitioner is no longer able to accept the same level of booking engagements to date. In addition, Safari claims he experienced a significant loss of income due to, due to the 
quote, direct acts of Erica, 36. So what I what it got me to thinking about was the direct, he is blaming his inability to, ex, to get the same level of booking engagements due to a significant loss of income due to direct acts from Erica. What are these direct acts, you may wonder? In my mind, I'm wondering if, because if you notice, since the blow up between Spice and Erica, and Erica left or was fired from the show, well, she was let go. We'll put it like that. Let me put the alleged badge because people get real tricky about the terms, okay? Um, so we'll just say dearly departed from the show. All right. Now, as a result of that, I'm wondering if he means that the act of what happened with her and Spice, with her calling Spice those derogatory terms, which resulted in her dismissal from the show. If you notice, we haven't really seen Safari play a big role on this show in any way, shape, or form since she left. Now, what that calls into question, and I know that he went down to Love & Hip Hop Miami, but for whatever reason, to me, I don't know why I just could not get into that show. And we haven't seen that show in a minute, right? So my wonder is, is he know, because you know in my mind, if he if Erica was still on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, let's say she had never done what she did, she would likely still be a cast member on that show. Now, the question then becomes, without Erica, is there any need for Safari on that show? One could argue that there isn't a need for him. But, I mean, there's a, a couple of single ladies floating around there. So I'm sure something could be conjured up for him to come back to Atlanta. But it just kind of goes to show you that, you know, this reality TV thing, it does work in people's favors because what ends up happening is as a result of being on the show, you're typically likely to at that point in time be at the front of the public's mind more, which probably means more bookings. So I'm wondering if that is the reason why he is blaming her for this situation because her, him being on Love & Hip Hop, specifically, specifically Atlanta, was it tied to her? I mean because they had a hot story for a long time what by hot i mean it like it was kind of leading the 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 this the the show right because think about it there was the whole it, before erica blew up the way that she did the storyline was her safari and spice and they're and they're getting into beef okay and spice sort of getting in the mix of their issues relatively right and then it became unfortunately about what erica called spice and that became the story and that became you know what all we talked about so it's very interesting to see how these things play out in the long term with regards to reality tv i'm less interested in the actual idea of the child supporter you know that's for them to figure out and i hope they figure it out but I think it's more interesting to see the sort of income ramifications of, you know, what happens, especially when somebody is taken out of a show and now she's doing her own thing with Zeus. Where does that leave him in this whole situation? Interesting. All right, let's get to the show itself. Um, we're going to be talking about episode 13 of season 12. It's called Nonsense and Sensibility. It says, Jock considers dropping out of Spice's album so he doesn't drop the ball on his marriage. Amy makes her move to Bambi's scraps. I love the description. To Bambi's scraps. Carly and Sierra's engagement party turns into a red wedding because Amy came to slay Sierra and her face. Okay? Um, here's the thing. I think I would respect this whole thing with Amy a bit more and her ability to take on both Bambi and Sierra. Um, and the way she'd be wearing Sierra out is insane to me. Like Sierra, mm -hmm. I would just stop. Like I would just stop because Amy is literally like 
I mean, I think she called Sierra Michael Jackson at one point in this episode. Or see, she made a reference to Michael Jackson's face. She made a whole bunch of references about Sierra's face and her and Sierra, like, you know, basically saying that Sierra was going to have a different man basically in six months. Um, but I mean, that whole thing could be said to Carly as well. And that's your girl. OK, to me, the whole I'm going to get into more of it in a, in a bit because we got a lot to talk about. Um if I had to rate this episode on a scale of one to ten, I would give it a um, I would give it an eight point five. You know, I feel like we're moving along, we're chugging along. We did get some resolutions to some things, but I don't know why. For some reason, the first part of the episode was giving me like sleepy vibes. But we'll get into it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and and dive right on in. You know, we find out that. Sierra and her man and Carly and her man are going to all be doing a little joint sort of engagement party or whatever, you know, to celebrate their loves of the season. OK, you know, I feel like Carly and Sierra, their relationships remind me of, you know, a new season of Bridgerton. It's going to be a new romance every season. You know what I'm saying? We can look forward to that. So, I mean. Yes, the party probably should have been a Bridgerton theme party because, again, it's like we're entering ball and gala season. We're entering the 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 summer season of of of, of galas, and here we are yet again. Uh, Spice and Erica got their new uh got the new flings for the season, and I love it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at it. You know what I mean? Like use the system before it use you. All right. Because the last thing that you want to do is end up in the same type of situation like a safari. Now, granted, again, like I said, safari could possibly come back on this show. I'm sure, there's again, there's a lot of single women out there. So, you know, there's possibilities. Always possibilities. I mean, Amy's still singing those sounds like. I mean, I don't know. Could she be? I don't know. Who, who know? Anyway, um, why do I foresee that happening in, in some season coming up? I, I just foresee it happening. Don't worry, safari. You'll, you'll be back to work soon. Um... So we learned that they're doing that. You know, Sierra's going to hopefully just be cool with Amy. And, you know, Carly is just going to be cool with Bambi. But Carly really got other things on her mind because we learned that her daughter's father has passed. Um, apparently he had a stroke, which I'm sorry to hear about. So her daughter is going through it. She does have a conversation, a sit down conversation with her daughter where her daughter really just talks about you know, her own regrets about having to be the one to pull the plug. And, you know, just I can only imagine what that is like. Um, and so just having I, the only thing I have reference to is just, you know, losing one of my best friends to a an aneurysm, which led to a stroke. And then it was just that quick. Um, and she was on life support for about maybe a day or so. And it was just, you know, being there in the final moments. I, I can only imagine how that responsibility probably weighs on Carly's daughter. So we, you know, we kind of do have empathy for that. Speaking of empathy, I don't know if you guys have seen Piece by Piece yet from by Pharrell. But I saw that last night at a screening. Shout out to NBC Universal, Comcast, as well as the Motion Picture Association. But y'all, that movie is so good and it is all done in Lego. But the when you're watching it, you I was worried about how I was going to respond to like a Lego movie. But you it's so good. You kind of forget that you're what you're not watching a real person like you're you're getting the emotion of everybody that's popping up on the screen. But it really does. The soundtrack alone is enough to make you want to go see it. So go see that. Just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, getting back to what I was saying. So Carly is dealing with that as well. Um, Yandy has a sit down Ponderosa with Zell. Zell wants to apologize to Yandy for, you know, uh, hitting Yandy with the stray when Yandy was laughing at Saucy Santana riding uh, Zell about his, his new baby mama. We learn that Zell feels, feels apologetic. He apologizes. You know, I do feel like a lot of the cast members have a bit of a, a, a 
a bit of respect for Yandy that kind of extends beyond just the drama of the show, which I like to see. But I also feel like Zell is still going to give us some 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 tea because he is still insisting that the streets are saying that Yandy's man is in, in those streets, went around those streets. OK, probably not made any more. Um, It gives credence to the stories when you find out that Mendices is not wearing his wedding ring. So uh, it, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, the 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 rumor mill is popping because you are also not doing anything to curb that. But we learned that Mendices don't care about the streets and what they're saying. So anyway, um, Yandy explains to him how difficult it is to have people constantly attacking her marriage. And that is not going to end anytime soon because we're going to get Jasmine and her best friend popping up on Kirk and not Kirk, Lord have mercy, but um, on Mendeecees and Yandy confronting him about coming to see her allegedly at the bar she work at. That'll be next week. And look like Yandy about to fight. We getting season two. Yandy is back. OK, um, she ain't running from Chrissy this time. She right up in this girl face. So let's move on to Scrappy and Amy. They go out on a date at this little bouncy park or whatever like that. I don't really know what it is, but it looked fun to me. Um, kudos to them for a good date. You know, Amy and Scrappy, to me, it feels very like, hey, you know, what are we doing? Do you have anything to do? I don't have nothing to do. And I'm, 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 I have a reason to be mad at Bambi. I mean, it's not a concrete reason. But I need something to do. So you know what, Bay, you single. Why don't you come and give me some of that little curve thing that you got going on down there, okay? And I'll see what I'll see. I'll see if I can see what that what my, what my mouth's gonna do. You know, that's what it's given for the both of them. He seemed like honestly, Scrappy seemed like he don't know why he there. Like he don't. He just seemed like he there. Like, I'm here for a good time. Y'all told me to show up today. Oh, she cute. I mean, he, what's up? What it is, though? You know, that's what it's giving me. Like, he's just kind of like, I can't really describe it. I'm like, do you know why you're here? Okay, like, I know I know she know why she here. But I don't know if Scrappy really know why he here. That's what it gives to me. I don't know. Is it just me? And it also gives petty to me because you really get the sense that there's two situations. There's one where you're saying, basically, yeah, you know, Bambi was my girl, but I was always looking at him. But then what would that make you feel like? What would what did, what would your other girlfriends then feel like with you with leaving you around their men or even in bringing their men around you? Like what? Because, I mean, that's kind of what it's, it, it's, it's screaming like. Well, I don't really have any boundaries except for the boundary that you might that you my friend. But girl, the minute that you stop being my friend, I'll take your man. And you know, Scrap ain't got no loyalty to to Bambi at this point because he like I feel like he see her as the op basically, the op slash baby mama. So it just kind of felt like he like again. Why am I here? Oh, she cute. Whatever, let's do it. Spice meets with young Jock, who is basically like, I'm not about to do this, um, this, 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 this crazy, confusing idea of a of a cast album. You got us all on this one song, like we doing a cipher, and this don't make no sense to me. I'm not doing that. I think it was partially that. I think it was partially I'm not about to tarnish my brand by hopping on a track with these people. You can't pay me to do that. Then I think it's also the fact that maybe he is just wisening up and being like, yo, I'm not about to do anything else that's going to take me outside of this house right now because I've been in the doghouse and I'm not trying to stay there. So if this is going to take me away from anything that I got going on and it ain't bringing me no peace because you got these people beefing with each other on records on the, and we all getting the same record. And I don't even really know what you're trying to do. And honestly, my lawyer did not sign off on this. I don't know. I'm not trying to do this. Like, that's basically what it's given. And Spice ain't doing no better in her explanations of what they're supposed to be. Oh, uh, she's like, oh, it's not, it's not a it's not everybody's not on the same track. Girl, it sounds like the same track. Okay. Like, I mean, what are we talking about? You when I hear the beat, it sounds the same. Now, is there maybe maybe there's a slight bit of differentiation? And I feel like I'm a good, like, I know music. 
But I do feel like, girl, what is you doing? Like, you, what you're saying doesn't make any sense to me. So I just kind of feel like Spice has a real, a lot of, like, a hard time explaining what she is trying to have done. All she knows is she want to have Jock perform next week. And Jock is like, I'm not doing that. Jock, I don't blame you because I don't know what she's trying to do neither. And so until I understand it further, I just have to assume that when I don't understand it, I can't do it. Speaking of Jock, the, you know, he is trying his hardest to make amends with Kendra. You know, he feels like she needs a softer approach when handling these types of situations. She's not trying to hear that. She just wants some respect. And if she can't get some respect, she about to go. And it better not happen again. If it happened again, she out. But his thing with her is you can't keep crying divorce every time something happens. Now, I'm in agreement with him. But the problem is, again, I do feel like a lot of y'all feel like, Kendra, you have been in this to win this despite the odds. So I just kind of also feel like I believe you're going to leave when you leave. You know, and then I look at it like this, and this is no disrespect, but do I really want my attorney running up on people on TV? Like, I don't know. Like, it just, I, I ain't trying to, like, listen, I, I want your business to thrive. Maybe maybe people go to her because they know she'll fight for them, okay? But I'm just saying, like, as, as an attorney, right, as somebody who is, like, you... Got you, you got you got things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like this this show and where it takes you, and even this relationship, I do feel like is beneath her. But and that's no shade to him. It just comes with the territory with him. But I do feel like when I think about somebody in her position doing the things that she's doing, I, it just baffles my mind why she would be there in the first place. But she agrees that she'll try to stop using the word divorce, it sounds like, but then still threatens that if it happens again, she out. They hold hands and caress, and then it's over. Just in time for the season to end. Thank God. And so then we get to... Um, Essentially, we get to the party, the engagement party, the double engagement party. And, you know, Amy, of course, is the first guest to show up. Sierra kind of just, you know, bypasses her. And as Carly is trying to get them to reconcile, you know, Sierra and Amy are like, listen, we're fine. We're going to be cordial. Amy's like, this is about love. It's going to be fine. More people start to come. All right. More people start to come. The crowd starts getting thicker. And, you know, people start getting into, you know, some, some mess, some messy conversations. And then you have Carly, who has had a change of heart about Bambi because she's come to recognize how short life is, is like, basically, Bambi, yo, listen. Listen, girl. And Sierra joins them. We got to talk. Life is too short. And Bambi does apologize for popping Carly upside the head with a foam. Thank God. Thank God it's some peace. And so they just kind of agree to table their issues, but they still they know they know they still need to talk about it, but they're at least softening their approach, which is great. But what are they gonna do about Amy? Bambi is like, she don't even go here. So I don't even know why we're talking about her. Bambi does a better job with Amy than Sierra. Amy is too quick for Sierra. And that's just the fact. So at the other table, Zell and Zell and Chaotic are kind of like 
trying to investigate Amy to find out what's going on. And Zell flat out comes out and says, like, girl, I heard you was, you know, bumping and grinding with Scrappy. And she's like, no, pump your brakes. We are just dating. So everybody finds out that it's true, that they got something going on, which everybody probably knew anyway, because they've been uh, promoting it all over town. So at this point, some kind of way, I feel like Bambi, um, Carly, and Sierra end up coming back over to the table. Amy is, it seems like at this point she's getting a little worked up because Chaotic then said something to piss her off. And now Sierra comes over and it's kind of rah-rah with her. And at first, Amy was like, well, girl, I was trying to let you live. But now, since you want to talk about you and your face, you, your old face, your new face, this face, that face, your left face, your right face, your front face, your back face, all of your faces, you and your faces, y'all can leave me alone with you and every new man that you have every new season. You look like Michael Jackson. I mean, this is, I mean, Amy was like, boom, boom, boom. And Sierra was saying something, but based, you know, you got to have, Amy got a certain level of bass to her voice. And that's just a fact. Okay. So what I mean by that is her voice is going to articulate and enunciate louder than Sierra, who has a more high-pitched voice. I can't even tell what Sierra is saying, to be honest with you. But I firmly hear every insult and dig that Sierra is providing for uh that Amy is providing for Sierra. She is reading her like hooked on phonics okay and it is bad it is lethal at her own engagement party and all her men can do is just sit there and look and it's like oh my god like sierra please stop finally bambi has to like step in and try to help her because bambi is quicker than sierra bambi has some great one-liners right but at this point, because Amy's already on a roll, um, she is literally over talking both of them. Um, and she finally has she has the final say because she's like, listen, I will find out, Bambi, if Scrappy is as good as you say he is. It's kind of a disgusting dig, but it's a dig no less. And so we ended there. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode down in the chatterization down below. Are you team Bambi, Sierra, or are you team Amy? Okay. Um, while I'm definitely team Bambi and Sierra, because I don't understand why Amy is so upset about a date or something with somebody from 12 years ago. Do I don't even remember like I don't like I recall very little about 12 years ago, to be honest with you. Um, so it's kind of like mm, your logic is flawed a little bit. And if you want scrappy, go ahead, girl. Like just just say that say that. You didn't need you don't need a, a, a you didn't need all of this to go after that, because I'm done with that, right? So I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comment section down below. With that being said, I will catch you in the next video.